Just a few announcements. Uh, I made an assumption which I should not have made about the ARS system. What I was referring to is that little box in front of you that when we ask the questions, fill in the particular number that's appropriate uh, for the question. Uh, I'm going to make this announcement now and I'll make it again. Uh, some U UBS drives are available uh, at the registration desk with the PowerPoint uh, presentations of all the speakers. All you have to do, it's, it's free of charge, and all you have to do is simply give us a little bit of information about yourself. So again, these UBS drives containing all the PowerPoint presentations are available free of charge at the registration desk. All you need to do is fill in a little information about yourselves. Also, uh, AFCON membership is available free of charge for the first year uh, to all people who have registered for Bridging the Gap uh, this year. We also want to invite all of the speakers uh, who wish to come to the AFCON meeting, which will take place at 5 o'clock in the JW uh, boardroom uh, up on the 30th floor. I think it's room 3002. Uh, now, with further ado, uh, let's go ahead and start the next session of, the, of this plenary session, which is on myeloproliferative disease. Uh, the chairs of this session will be uh, Drs. Ming of the National Taiwan University and Dr. Malhutra of the Postgraduate University uh, in Chanagar, uh, India. Dr. Ming, Dr. Malhutra. I stand corrected. I'm learning a little bit about Chinese culture. It's Dr. Yao rather than Dr. Ming. Good morning, everyone. Let's move to this section. Uh, the, the first speaker will be Professor Chen Jiang. Uh, she comes from China, Peking University Institute of Hematology. His talk will be uh, advanced in the treatment of CML. Professor Jiang, please. Good morning, everyone. This is, uh, I have changed my topic, CML in China. It's my great pleasure to introduce CML in China. Oh, oh. I have two versions in O. Uh, this is uh, what I will talk today, talk about today, the outlines. The first, the current status of CML in China. From two comprehensive surveys, we can see CML in China had a lower annual incidence and a younger age at diagnosis uh, than the uh, reports from North American populations. And other disease characteristics are similar to the other reports. According to the national insurance coverage of CML therapies in China, hydrouria, interferon, and the transplantation were, cover, were, co were fully covered or partial covered by the insurance, but TKI are not covered by insurance in the most, uh, in the majority of the regions in China. But patients can get the TKIs through partially paid aid programs, but at least they should pay at least 11, 11 US dollars per year and much more for the certain neighbor or neurotic neighbor per year. So it's very expensive in China to receive TKI treatments. According to the survey from Asia CML Study Islands developed five years ago, I think, uh, the situation of the treatment partner received some of the patients in China did not receive the active agents such as imatinib and hydrouria in some regions is the mainstay choice. GPAP cohort is the largest series for CML patients in China. So we can see the number of the patients who received the imatinib treatment by year increased. Most of them are early CP patients. 
because in the two or three years, in the couple of uh, years, the second generation TKIs, nilotinib and desinib will prove as a second line option for the CLM patients after imatinib failure. So hundreds of patients have received the, sec the, the second generation TKIs, but most of them are in advanced phase. The introduction of TKI decreased the number of patients who undergo transplantation by years. Transplantation is preferred for CLM patients with TKI failure and in advanced phase, and for those who cannot afford a long-term TKI treatments in China today. The second TKI treatments of, uh, for, for CML patients from our hospital. For the newly diagnosed patients in chronic phase, we can see a very good response, cytogenetic and the molecular response, and the outcome similar to other reports. Even though for the patients with interferon failure in chronic phase, a very good response and outcomes. The, se the second generation TKI was uh, used only for clinical trial in China. These are, these are the data from our hospital, imatinib versus nilotinib for newly diagnosed patients in chronic phase. We can see the deeper and the early cytogenetic and the molecular response, but this super rate response has not translated into the improvement uh, in EFS and PFS and OS at the early follow-up. I think a uh, long follow-up will, will be need to give us a, a clear answer. But uh, for the imatinib failure patients, they will benefit from switch to the second generation TKIs. This is the result from, of the desertinib therapy for the uh, third or the second therapy for the patient's failure, uh, uh, imatinib failure patients. The third, transplanting the uh, TKI arrow, the experience from our hospital. Nowadays, transplantation is not a first uh, uh, option for most of the patients uh, or the world. This is only because or based on uh, Mm, comparison the result of each treatment alone, but not based on the comparative uh, studies. Ten years ago, we uh, designed a, a study to compare the two treatments, imatinib or HLA identical simply transplant. 348 patients involved. This is the result. We can see imatinib was associated, was associated a less treatment-related mortality, and the similar progress risk and the better EFS, PF, and, and overall survival than transplantation. Another comparative study for the previously imatinib and treated AP patients, we can see transplantation is superior to imatinib for the total Pop, uh, pop, uh, total, total cohorts. Uh, but uh, I, I want to know whether the choice of therapy contributes to the survival uh, uh, differences. Uh, we uh, perform a multiple, uh, a multivariate analysis of the total population. And the three prognosis was received for both OS and the PFS, including CM duration more than 12 months, hemoglobin less than 100, and the peripheral blood, blood, blood plus more than 5%. We grouped the patients, the total patients, into three cohorts, low risk, intermediate rates, and high risk. In the low risk, we can see no differences. In the intermedi intermediate risk, more, develop, more relapse developed in the imatinib groups. In the high risk patients, transplantation is, is significantly superior to imatinib. We conclude for the 
AP patients, imatinib, no, 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 transplantation is superior to imatinib, conferring a, a significant survival advantage to higher or and uh, intermediate risk patients. And uh, for the low risk patients, no, no differences, or they could have a local good response outcomes. The third study to compare TKIs versus transplantation for previously TKI unretreated BP patients. So we can see transplantation is super, absolutely. The final topic. Therapeutic choice for CMO patients based on financial constraints. What will be the first option for CP, CML in China? TKIs, a lifelong therapy, are used mainly through partially paid uh, patient access program. The second generation TKI are more expensive than imatinib and not covered by insurance and approved by SFDA only for the second option. So imatinib will be the mainstay choice as a first line option for CML. And how about the role of, of transplantation in China? Transplantation offers a chance of cure. So, and uh, he, uh, transplantation with a less cost than TKIs. So transplant perhaps will remain a first choice for, for, for young patients with HLA identical donors and a second line option following imatinib for those who cannot afford a long-term second generation TKI therapies. What's our next move? In my opinion, to find ways to make TKIs more widely available for more CML patients is most important. And the second, to improve CML management according to the international guidelines by routine cytogenetic and molecular monitoring. And third, to identify early signs of resistance to TKIs and enable a timely switch to alternative therapies. I appreciate my college, and this, this slide didn't show my picture here. So thank you very much. Thank you for your attention.